Hey guys, this is a quick video to learn how to query multiple PDF files using Langchain and Pinecone and in the responses cite the sources. So the first step is going to be using the directory loader to load the data files from our data folder, then using the recursive text splitter to split the data into chunks, after which we are going to use the OpenAI embedding model to create embeddings and save these vector embeddings into Pinecone. Our next step then, when a user asks a query, is to embed the query using OpenAI Embedding API, and then call Pinecone with this embedding to search for semantically similar vectors. These results are then processed using OpenAI LLM API in natural language. Before we jump into the notebook, I'd like to remind you to subscribe to the channel, and if you like the video, please hit the like button. Now, if you've watched my other videos, we're going to go through the same motions of setting up the OpenAI API key, the Pinecone API key, as well as the Pinecone environment. We then quickly load our dependencies. Let's run this cell. Our next step is to set up the directory loader from langchain.document underscore loaders and then use that to load the documents. We are specifying the directory of where our data is stored and providing a star.pdf filter. Here's a quick look at the files that we have in our data folder. These files are files from Accenture, KPMG, and McKinsey about generative AI, its use cases, the risks and rewards, as well as its economic potential. The links to these files will be provided in the video description in case you're interested in reading them further. Okay, now let's jump back to our notebook. We've set up the directory loader and we are going to call load on it. Let's run this cell. Next, we use the recursive character text splitter to split the documents that we have loaded. The variable text is a list of chunks of data. This is what we see over here. And we have got 336 elements in this list. Let's examine the 100th element. We also see here that within each element, not only do we get the page content back, but we also get back the metadata in which is specified the source as well as the page number. And here's how you will access the metadata and the elements of the metadata. Next, we move on to initializing Pinecone. Here we are initializing it with the API key, the environment, as well as the index name. Let's now go to pinecone.io to see how to set up the index. I already have my index set up, but I'll just walk through the process for setting it up. You click on the create index on the main page and type in your index name in the index name field. Set the dimensions to be 1536, which is the dimensions of the embeddings that's returned back from the OpenAI embedding API and leave the metric to cosine and then click on create index. The index typically takes a little while to get created and it'll say initializing over here where it says ready until it is initialized, after which it'll say that it is ready. Once your index is ready, come back to your notebook. Now we set up the OpenAI embeddings to be used while calling Pinecone. We are now ready to actually embed the data and save it to Pinecone. We are going to do that using the from documents method, passing it our document chunks, the embeddings object, as well as the index name. Let's run this cell. We can also query to see that doc search is a vector store type object. We are now ready to query the data. We are going to use retrieval QA from langchain.chains. So let's import those dependencies. Now we set up the LLM with temperature equal to zero and we also pass it the OpenAI key. 
we are going to write a helper function to help us parse the response back from the retrieval QA chain. We are interested in the following keys of the response object. Results, source underscore documents, source, and page. Let's run this cell. Next, we set up our retriever. Make sure to set include underscore metadata equal to true. We'll be passing this retriever to the retrieval QA chain in the next step. We are now ready to query the data. How exciting. Let's set up the query, list all the use cases for generative AI. And now we pass the query to the QA chain that we earlier set up. Let's examine the response. Response is a dictionary with the following keys. We see query over here, which says list all the use cases for generative AI. We get a result back with, which is the answer back to our query. And then we have source documents listed as part of this dictionary. For each of the source document, we observe that we have the page content listed as well as the related metadata such as the source document name as well as the page number. And our final step is to clean this up so that it's better readable. We'll use our helper function parse response to clean it up. And here we have it. Generative AI can have applications in customer self-service, IT, audit, human resources, operations, and many more business functions. It is also citing the sources uh, with the name of the files as well as their page numbers. Okay, now as a bonus, let's try to accomplish the same task using a vector store agent. Let's load the dependencies. We're going to need the vector store toolkit, vector store info, and create underscore vector store agent from langchain.agents.agent underscore toolkits. First, we set up the vector store info. We're going to use the vector store that we previously created called doc search to set this up. In order to use the vector store agent, we're going to have to set up a vector store toolkit using the vector store info. So that's what we are doing here. And now we set up the query and run our agent. Let's see what it comes back with. And we get the same response back. Generative AI can be used for customer self-service, IT, audit, human resources, operations, and other business functions. It also presents us with the information about the document names in which it found this information. Subscribe to the channel, like, comment, and share, and I'll be back soon. Bye.